I'm Dr. Keith Barretts, an ophthalmologist at Mayo Clinic. I'd like to talk about Fuchs corneal dystrophy and some research we've done recently on that disease. Fuchs corneal dystrophy is a disease that affects the cornea, which is the front window of the eye. The cornea focuses light and allows light to, to enter the eye. Fuchs corneal dystrophy is a familial condition, meaning that uh, it has a genetic basis, does tend to run in families. It's a condition that causes a gradual loss of the cells on the inside of the cornea, the endothelial cells. These are the cells that pump fluid out of the cornea and keep the cornea in a relatively dehydrated state. And it's that dehydrated state that allows the cornea to remain clear. Uh, with this condition, these cells gradually die off uh, prematurely. They are not replaced and the cornea gradually becomes swollen, thick, and cloudy uh, in older age. Uh, Fuchs corneal dystrophy is the most common indication for corneal, corneal transplantation in the United States. Uh, in our institution, it accounts for the majority of corneal transplants that we perform. The cause for Fuchs corneal dystrophy is, is not known. Uh, some genes have been identified, but these are probably minor variants accounting for a small proportion of the disease. Uh, we do know that there are some biochemical abnormalities in in Fuchs dystrophy, there's some evidence of oxidative stress in the endothelial cells, but the true pathophysiology uh, has not been clarified. Uh, we performed a study here at Mayo uh, trying to elucidate the genetics of the condition uh, in more detail. We performed a genome-wide genome association study, which looked at, at hundreds of thousands of single nucleotide polymorphisms across the entire human genome. We compared the, gene, the genes from 130 affected patients to 260 unaffected control patients, and we identified a gene called transcription factor 4, which encodes the E22 protein uh, to be highly associated with Fuchs dystrophy. The uh, results were replicated in another group of 150 patients in the 150 controls, and what we found was that having one copy of the risk allele in this transcription factor 4 gene gave a five and a half fold increase in the chance of having the Fuchs trait uh, or having two copies of that gene gave over a 30 fold risk of having that trait and our p-values were quite small so uh, data were highly significant. Uh, the E22 protein is a basic helix loop helix uh, transcription factor. It binds with other helix loop helix transcription factors and binds the EBOX promoting site on genes. Uh, these dimers of the basic helix loop helix transcription factors can then either uh, promote or downregulate the transcription of a variety of genes. Uh, the, uh, the E22 protein therefore can control a variety of uh, of biochemical pathways within the cell. The significance of our research is that we have found what we feel is the primary gene involved with Fuchs dystrophy, the and thus the primary protein which may lead us to the pathophysiology. It's a lot more complicated than having one gene which produces one, one protein. Uh, when we identify a gene that's a transcription factor, there are many different mechanisms within the cell that can be affected. However, this at least is a lead to tell us where to start looking to come up with the pathophysiology of the disease. Uh, here at Mayo, we plan to continue some of our genetic research on this disease, but we also plan to start looking more specifically into how this ET2 protein and perhaps other genes, perhaps other proteins, may uh, lead to Fuchs dystrophy. Ultimately, the goal, of course, would be to come up with, with a treatment for, for the condition so that patients who are identified with the disease at a young age could be treated medically with something that somehow alters these biochemical pathways within, within the corneal endothelium rather than just observing the patients until the point where their vision is so poor that they need a corneal transplant.